Is anyone for you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world? What will says to beware? Pay attention lest you be deceived. Everything that you live and do in this world has been taught to you from a childhood. Have you considered that what you have been taught is a lie? So sure, what day is the Sabbath day? What is the fourth commandment? What does God require of us? Is God a treaty? That's right. These are the questions that we have to ask. Because if these questions have the truth behind them, then the answers should be easily understood. But we don't have these answers. We have more questions than we have the truth. And it's because many of us have been deceived. Many of us have been taught so many lies, it is now confusing to identify what is truth and what is falsehood. Well, the first place that we need to start is with the manual by the God that created everything, which is God's word. God's word is the manual to give the sense. So in God's word, it gives a warning. Like in any manual, you get a warning. The warning in God's word says, the book of Colossians, chapter 2 and verse 8, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Be, be aware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. Philosophy is like what? That men and women are equal. Philosophy is like what? That women, it is okay for women to dress immodestly. And it's okay for a man to go around sewing his oats and sleeping around with a bunch of women and not married. Philosophy is like what? That is okay to go about and say that we believe in every God under the sun. What other philosophies do we have? Philosophies that it's okay to do your crime as long as it is you not harming nobody else. These are the things that we've been taught by men. And we beware lest any man spoil your philosophy and being deceived after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world. After the traditions of men. Traditions like what? Like having the biggest sales on a Saturday, which is the Sabbath day, or celebration of your birthday. That is also a tradition of man. You can find nowhere in no holy book, in no word of God, where God says, hey, celebrate your birthday, it's your day. Or in Christmas, there is nowhere where you can read about in the word of God, where God says, celebrate the day of the birth of my son. Or there is nowhere in the word of God that says, man, you can sleep around with any situation you want. Just don't get married to them. Or Sister, you can walk around out here with your bamsi outside or with your breast outside and it's fine. There is nowhere that you're going to read that in the Word of God. In the Word of God, it stipulates a particular type of living after righteousness. Righteousness. In the Word of God, it teaches about righteousness. So here's the question. What exactly is righteousness? How are we going to know the good from the bad? How are we going to know the truth from the lie? Well, we need to go back to the manual, which is God's Word. Let's see what righteousness is. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 25. Read. And it shall be our righteousness if we observe to do all these commandments. It shall be your righteousness if you do pay attention to who? To all these commandments. To what? To all these commandments. Some of God's commandments. All these commandments. One commandment in particular is the fourth commandment. Do you know the fourth commandment? You know what's the book of my man? You're not worried about that? Yes, you pray. You pray to pray to our Lord. I don't need book of my man. Do you know what's the book of my man? No? You shouldn't have the book of my man. You have to keep God's commandment. Why is it that we say we pray to God and we love God, but we don't know what God says to do? How are you living life comfortably, not knowing what your God said for you to do to be good with Him? But in God's word, we say that we have our righteousness if we observe to do His commandments. The fourth commandment for any person that calls himself a believer of God is to remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Let's get the fourth, let's get the fourth commandment. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. In Exodus chapter 20, God himself speaks the Ten Commandments. Not man, not Moses, God himself. So if you are disobeying these words, you are disobeying the Father that you claim to pray to this morning. These are God's words. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. God said in his fourth commandment to remember the Sabbath day. Do you know what day is the Sabbath? Today. Today is the Sabbath of your God that you claim to pray to this morning. 
Today is the day that you're not supposed to be working. Today is the day you're not supposed to be buying or selling. The God that you claim to pray to said, don't do it. He said what? From the top? Remember the Sabbath day. The God you pray to this morning said, remember my Sabbath day in his word. But look at us. Remember my Sabbath day. My fourth commandment. Read. To keep it holy. He said keep it holy. By doing what? Read on. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. You have six days that God is providing you life, breath, and health, and strength to do all the selling, all your buying, all your labors, all your burdens. You have six days that I give you health, strength, and life to do that all. But read. Sabbath. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of God. God's Sabbath day. The God that you claim to pray to. The God that you claim to be a, a believer of. He said in his fourth instruction, remember my day. He told you what day it was. He told you what you were allowed to do on the other days. But on this day, the fourth commandment, the Sabbath day, which is today, he said, read, in it, thou shalt not do any work. On the Sabbath day, we are not to do any work. That means nobody out here should be buying that says that they believe in God. Nobody out here should be selling that says that they believe in God and that they pray to this God. His word says, don't do any work on my Sabbath day. He's the one that provides for you. Is it not so, sister? He's the one that gives you your health. He's the one that gives you the ability to do what you're doing today. But yet, we don't give God that honor and that respect. What do we do? We turn our ears away from the words of God and we continue to do according to our own mind, according to what we feel to do. We now become our own gods because you don't want to listen to God's words, you want to listen to your words. When God says, Sister, dress modestly so that you can keep what is precious that God gave unto you in the right time for your husband. You don't want to do that. You want to flaunt everything that you have. Then. When an unrighteous brother comes up and takes what is not to be had without marriage, you now cry and say, all man is dumb. All man wants sex. All your selling sister is sex. It is a sad state and it's a vicious cycle that needs to be corrected on both sides. Read the commandment again. Read. The book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Read. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. If you are confused as to what day the seventh day is, just pick up any dictionary. A dictionary will tell you what day is the seventh day. Pick up any calendar. A calendar or almanac will tell you what is the seventh day. We're going back to school. The days of the week are Sunday, Monday, and you know the rest. The seventh day is the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The Lord your God. God you claim to pray to that says in his fourth commandment, do not work, do not buy or sell on his Sabbath day, sisters. He says to dress modestly, sisters. He says to remember my commandment, sisters. Brethren, read. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. God gave you strength for six days to do all your work and your labor. All he asks for after he gives you health, your strength and your life is this. Read. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. The God that you probably prayed to this morning said that. But we don't want to listen to this. As a matter of fact, that's God's words. We just go and do our own thing. We just go and continue selling. Because at the end of the day, I had a gate. God not going to gate to me. I had a gate. Right? Give me Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 1. What? 22 and verse 1 and verse 22. 1 and verse 22. Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 22. Hey, I'm ready. I'm ask you a question. You know this, right? You know who the Israelites are? Anybody know who the Israelites are? Anybody know who God's chosen people? Does God have a chosen people? Is everybody God's people? Does God love everybody? We have questions. Who have answers? We have questions. Who has answers? Read. The book of Proverbs, chapter 1 and verse 22. How long, ye simple one, will he love simplicity? One of the questions that we have is of this one. How long are we going to be foolish? How long are we going to turn away from God? Sister, how long are you going to turn away from God, Gil? How long are you going to keep breaking God's commandments, Gil? Sister, how long are you going to turn away from God? How long are you going to keep breaking commandments? How long are you going to keep studying things that this world are not what God's here to do? How long? How long? Oh, Father, he'll do the trade and thing, but talk to him. Bridget, let me ask you a question. 
How long are we going to continue in this state? How long are we going to continue not doing what God said to do? Let's step out of this. Come on. Oh, you want me up front? Yeah. You got to let people pass through me. How long are we going to stay in this? How long are we going to stay in this? First of all, let me ask you this question. Better question. Are we in a good state as go as people with no. in regards to God? No. 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 Your answer is no. We're not in a good state. Why do, based on your observation, are we not in a good state with God? Why are we not in a good state based on your observation, your your experience? Why are we not in a good state? You seeing out here? Yeah? We are. Well, presently right now, I right. can say that it looks as though we are getting a weapon. So right now, it's looking as though we're getting a weapon from God. Yeah. Right now, it's saying we're getting punished from God. Correct. Are you and I inclusive of that punishment? Well, generally, I would say everyone. Everybody, right? Everyone. You and me? Yeah. All right. What, so, based on that, no, I'm asking this question. So, it's looking as though God is punishing us. Have you ever asked yourself for why? For what reason? There are simple things from my knowledge is um, basically not obeying the rules or the laws of the Bible. So we, you, from your observations, okay, we don't, we're not obeying God's will. Correct. But are you inclusive of that as well? Yes. You I, are inclusive of that? Yes. So what is the solution to fix it? Hmm. The solution to fix that, uh, I figured that that may have to come from the grassroots in terms of teaching the parenting. You know, the word of the Almighty. You know, it's not something that basically me and you can. Um, I mean, we could talk so much, but you, you have to start from the grassroots. Right. Because growing up as a youngster, it was always taught us to ah. give thanks and praise. But right. Not much people have that in the in the IQ in these days. All right. So you said the solution is teach from the grassroots, from the youngest age. Yeah. Come up. Yes. So what about those who are already grown? Well, like yourself, like myself, like other persons like us. What about I teach it to her from young, right? Makes sense. But what about the ones who are already grown, who are already adults, who are no longer children? Well, what for them? You, you, you would try to teach them, but there's only so much you can do because at the end of the day, when a tree is grown, I can't bend that tree to go over the next side, it's already grown. But if you trim it, they can trim the branches. Well, yes, but there's really the trimming of the branches is what I'm teaching you to still come in line no but it's only so much because i could trim so much but after that time you can still come back home. no bending the tree is changing the action right yeah bending the tree changing the action if i can't bend the tree that means i could i could cut off certain action from the tree yeah not bend the tree but at least i can cut off certain action correct so that means you have to enforce certain rules in this book to cut off certain action yeah. but that's not what you're talking about you're talking about speaking correct but it's not just speaking alone what about for yourself How long, simple ones, will he love simplicity? Three. And the scorners delight in their scorning, Three. and fools hate knowledge. How long will our people, will we continue in our foolishness and keep turning our ears away from God and love and hating knowledge? Which is what? The word of God. Yeah. The word of God is when he defines us now, when he read Malachi chapter 2 and verse 7. In this knowledge, God requires us to do something when it comes to change. Read. Read Malachi. The book of Malachi, chapter 2 and verse 7. Read. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth. Anybody claiming to be a pastor or a teacher of God's words, supposed to be teaching God's words, correct? His laws, right? His laws like go be by us and all working on his Sabbath, right? Anybody that claims to be a teacher or a preacher of God's words must be teaching that. Yeah. Keep the laws of God. People are supposed to go towards the pastor to get to understand the laws of God. Yeah. Not to get a motivation or speech, but to get the understanding on how to better keep the laws of God. For example, according to the Bible, women are not supposed to wear pants. According to the Bible, men are supposed to have beards. According to the Bible, male and female are not to be in a sexual relationship without marriage. Yeah. These are laws that God has put in place for our benefit. These things are not being taught or enforced, enforced in the way that they should. Yeah. Now, the best way for somebody to do this, I told them I mean, 
Especially for somebody to teach this is to be an example for themselves. That's right. The best way for somebody to begin to teach this is to be the example for themselves. How are we going to be the example? Let's see what the word of God says about it. Read. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. Read. I thought on my way and turned my feet until I touched the morning. First thing, David is writing this psalm here. He's a prophet of God. He's writing this psalm, which is like a song. But you know how some people use conscious rap or conscious reggae? to teach a message, to try to educate the masses but through song and melody. If you see anything that Psalms is, up, is about, it's about teachings of God and righteousness, but in songs and melodies that are written down in lyrics. In this lyric it says, I have to think on my way. You have to think about your action and ask the question that I ask you. What is the problem with today's society? Where do I stand in that problem? How are we going to fix that problem? And when am I going to start with the seven questions we must ask with our God? Because with this now, I have to ask you, if we're not keeping the commandments, if you're not keeping the commandments, then when is it going to start? Well, that question is no. Uh, yes, I get it. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. I thought on my way and turned my feet unto thy testimony. I thought on my ways and I turned my feet, my actions, unto your words, your records, God. There's not testimony, it's a record or a witness at all. I turned my feet unto your words, God. We out here just idle by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are autopilot. Sorry. You look at some of our people's faces, I look at my brother's face across there. Men just going through the motions, dog. I just hear for this being here, dog. I just hear for this being here, dog. Yeah. They don't have no purpose again in the, eyes, in the eyes of a black man. There's no purpose again in the eyes of the Israelite man. We're just trying to survive out here on scrums. And at the end of the day, they're getting jacked up from God and you don't understand why. And they don't care. It's like they're just getting on the tanks are we and again. And you, my brother, would have been just like us on this other side of this mic. And now the position is, what are you going to do with yourself? What do you even care? Do you stand on that on that line? Well, what are you saying? What at the same time? I'm hooked. I'm hooked. I'm hooked. Where I should say, I would prefer to be helped or guided. Guided. You say, yes, you do care, but you prefer to be in a place to be helped or guided. Yes. But the first guidance is here. Yeah. Come on, ask question. When is the last time you read this book? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, when is the last time you read this book? See how long it's taking right here? The first place, nobody, we are not out here to ask anybody to believe on us enough. Forget us, it's the word of God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.